thought I was losing my mind a minute ago. Had a PM, made a phone call, was on the phone for a little while outside. Came back in and this disappeared. So, uh, temperature on this one. Let's take a look at that. Power all the way down, and turn the power up, you can see the marker at the very top. See that? That's pretty clear, huh? It's at 30 megahertz. Now let's uh, go to 50 kilohertz. We have to turn this down. Yeah, right into the adjacents. That's all the way down, all the way up, and all the way down. We have to readjust again. I'm trying to focus on everything here. Sorry about that. See that? That's a factory radio. Welcome back to the bench, there, guys and girls. There's been questions and. There's, there's people out there, I think some of them might even believe some of the shit they spew. So we're going to help you again to get to the bottom of this. Yes, I have the ability to run a radio like this directly into something like that. See that? Kind of cool, huh? So, considering that I do, I will. And uh, we're going to get into a few more things. Some people said you don't even need a scope or calibration is irrelevant. I mean, these people are out of their flipping mind. I wouldn't let them touch your radio. Best thing to do is buy it stock and leave it alone. Just leave it alone. You don't want one of these kind? Just buy like a 980 for sideband, leave it alone, or a Cobra 29, plug it in. We're going to cover a few different things. This might be a long video. This radio is straight out of the box, converted only. That's it. It's the only thing that's been done. Converted, turned on, plugged in. We'll go to the scope here in a minute. But what I'm showing you right now is, as you can see, the radio is directly connected to the service monitor. There's no sampler. There's no meter. There's nothing but a piece of Elmar 240 that I personally made all the connections with. Right. Yes, I'm the solderaholic. There we go. Alright. So now let's, before we go much further, let's take a look at it. I'm not going to put this one back on the bench until it's ready. This one has to get done. I figured, let me show it. But what was weird, like I was saying a minute ago, it did it, it come back and stopped doing it, I had to get it warm. So temperature is always critical. Always, 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 always. After my tune, will it do it? No, they don't. That's why it's critical to tune the radio properly. So let's, you see that right there? Oh, by the way, SDRs are getting more and more popular these days, it seems like. And you see some of these videos, where you see it like that. Let's go to 30 kilohertz. Point 0.03, 0.03. Wish that beep, but it don't. You can see the two side bands in the center, and you see the rest of it splattering out. Okay. Well, when you're looking at some of these SDRs, and I've seen my signal on some of them, and I've seen others. You'll see, just like you're seeing right there, you'll see a spike or the, the two side bands. You get a pointer here, like this, carrying the two side bands to spread out even more. So they're even worse than this. And then a big hump, a giant hump, okay? Going out, God only knows how many channels. See that? 
I will connect mine. Maybe I'll do one stop the camera. But that, that's that's a whole bunch of stuff, guys and girls, with the camera sitting here, etc. Instead of well, I'll have to show mine, okay? That's all I can that's all I can tell you. And you can see mine, my radio on a couple of different gates with SDR. Right there at the edge. Right there at the knee. Perfect. But you'll see that the spike, the two sidebands are much higher in amplitude or in dB than the rest of that signal. That's just a whole bunch of shit. Some of you guys are saying, holy shit, hard drive. Uh-huh. Trying to tell you this isn't SDR, this is the real shit. It's the real McCoy you're looking at here. This is gonna get warm. This is a factory radio still. Oh yeah, factory regulator. That's in there, Cricket. I didn't really look too close. I checked it out, fired it up, and I'm doing this video. But again, the same thing with SDRs as this. Depending on the antenna and what's connected to it for an attenuator, it's gonna be a very false reading. And the speed of it and how fast it samples. I wish that that was even better than it is. Maybe one day, but what I want, even my, my two A10s with 16 gig of RAM won't have the processing ability to do it. To go out like 30 megahertz, say 300 megahertz, and do all the different various spacings and frequency bandwidths that I'm looking for at real time. It's real time, like this, is the key. Otherwise, if your sampling rate's slow, you really can't see what you're looking at. It's almost like using a digital scope. All it is is a bunch of pictures put together in one and taking a sample. It's nothing like one of these. That's why I like my CRT. Maybe one day, but I don't really have the room. I have my other service monitor. Now, a long time ago, I, uh, I used, I actually owned a, a 7L12 Tektronics. I had it in a truck. It's way too much. Just too much in a TM. It was a TM5000 or whatever it was. The case, the weight, the heat, the current was too much. I really like that spectrum analyzer. It's an old one, but it's a good one. Hold on one second here. It's going to be a long video, I guess. I want a lot of you guys to catch on to some of those. All right, what's, what's really important and what's real? I'm sick of all the bullshit. There's too much of it. I'm not gonna flash the, all the certificates on this and the certificates on that. You know what that is, all the calibrations on this is right there in the slug. I'm the individual that made all the coaxes. All the lengths, everything's on the money. I'm not gonna get into frequency, just wavelengths and voltage. This measures voltage. I have a video on how a scope measures voltage of what a watt actually is. Maybe I'll end screen it. It's an old video, I used an old phone with it. You know, it's kind of been an attitude. Sometimes I'm in an attitude. So be it, you know, oh well. But uh, I want you to really learn more about this. And especially that what that is right there, that thing. The RF generator where to go. Ah, that right there. It's like 22 pieces of test equipment in one. All right, so let's take another look at this. Let's go to 60 kilohertz. As you can see, we are into the adjacent. See it? It's in view. Yeah, there's somewhere in the way, but not bad. I don't want to be moving all this stuff too much because it screws up my uh, equipment that I gotta fix it. But either way, it's gonna be the same until we go to a higher frequency or bandwidth. See it? See how it lost power? Is it correlating now? When you see that giant hump on the SDR? That's only at 1K tone. And I'm gonna get into later in this video. Hopefully, I don't forget. So I might piece this video together where some people think that's all you need is this. There's a lot more to it and it must be calibrated. If it's not calibrated, it's just as useless as anything. 
It's like there's scales out of out of measurement, out of sync, out of calibration. It's useless too if it has to be correct. An ounce is an ounce. You know, a ton is a ton. So they got to be right. Otherwise, it'll be drastically off. So what I'm going to do later on is I'm going to—I I don't have anything that's out of calibration. It's—it's it's all within the specs. This thing's within specs. There's a number of ways of verifying this between the service monitor, the scope, a GPS discipline oscillator. Two of these. There's there's ways. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to turn that into a 20 megahertz scope and we're going to have to do a flip. You're going to have to use your imagination. Not something that's crazy down the yellow brick road, but uh, I'll double scale. And I normally always double scale everything unless it's going to be over to 4 to 1 and you can't see it. Usually when I'm always voice, I one bar up, one, one bar down, uh, a 100 megahertz scope can easily double scale at 27 megahertz vertical amplifiers are more than more than sufficient then so to be able to read the voltage all right so let's bring this to okay that was okay let's go to 0.07 let's modulate it look see does that hump ring any bells now 0.08 If you're wondering, there it is. Let's see. Alright. That sucks. Bad, okay. So let's go to 30 megahertz. And there we go again. That's not good. And that's at low power, that's full power. You have to watch the marker at the top of the spectrum analyzer. Yes, I'm turning it right here. See it? You'll see it more in the scope here shortly when I go into the sample through the scope, etc. Let's get a close look. You can see the marker at the top. That's where you set it. I'm going to turn the power up now. You see it down. I'm going to go up quickly down quickly. You with me on that? Alright, so let's go to say 60. Oh, wrong one. 60 to be able to see the first harmonic. The one on the far left is just a marker, but you're looking at the first harmonic now. 54 to the right. That's not good guys. I mean that's not good at all. Remember what I'm going into. I have the ability to do this, so I'm showing you. You can say you're welcome. Yeah, kind of cool. 13 minutes. Wait, wait, no, don't tell me 13 minutes on the camera. I swear I'm plugged in now. That's how much time. I got, I guess. There are 13 minutes. Pretty sure I'm plugged in. And we might have to stop it, but I'll keep this going. The swore was charged. Alright. Let's go to say 300. Not as pretty as you thought, is it? That's out of the box. We're going to check a few other ones. Then we'll check mine. Oh, one thing is floating around in there. The dust it must be. Alright. You're probably wondering about sideband. I'm going to save sideband for something else. There's sideband right there on a single tone 1K. Very close. Fifty kilohertz. All right. I'm going to say, like I said, I'm going to save sideband for a later date. You guys are going, man, listen to that thing. And my other one's out there. Well, there's a reason. And just using these. None of that power mic shit or junk. Nope. 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 
That's a, that's 30 years ago stuff. Unless you're a newbie at it, you know, and then you power mic. But stay away from the power mics. Find someone that can do the work. All right. So uh, what else do I want to show here? Going direct. You're gonna dig what you see on sideband. So click subscribe so you don't miss it. Stay tuned in. Let's get this disconnected now. From here, let's make sure that everything's in plain sight now. Let's see. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, so let's get this out of here. And reconnect the rest of the bench. power, change the attenuator, I showed a video of this before how people were trying to pull the shit over your, your face, okay, there she is, bone stock radio, it's all plain in sight, it's a 100 watt plug, splatter, now let's turn it down, so we can turn it down, it doesn't do anything work, really worth cleaning it up it actually makes it dirtier so we have to change the level again not good is it all right so that's that part I'm turn this back down crank the power back up open you can see it right there, it's all right there. I've seen some people do some really shady shit with Facebook and YouTube, I have. So a single scale. That probably looks too bright. In the camera anyways. this so much better than that digital thing then your knob sucks on it it's like a hundred volts something like that versus this one is adjustable when you're actually working on them this means they're all the difference in the world versus someone just doing the same thing all the time maybe as a hobby but when you're actually doing this you want that maybe some of the newer ones you know, more sophisticated than that but that one there it's okay for monitoring definitely not sideband though I do have to turn this up and down so I can personally see it. All right, so there we go. Let's turn the power all the way down. Let's go back up. Not good. So let's go to, say, 30 megahertz. So now you don't see anything. Nothing. Well, you see it a little bit, but 40 dB of it has been attenuated. It's all gone. It's history. You can't see it. It's consumed in the meter. This is a 30 megahertz plug. It will up to 25 to 60. And that's a 30 megahertz attenuator with 40 dB attenuation. 
So it's not there, you don't see it. Do I go through all this stuff when I'm tuning your radio? I do, I just don't always show it. It's a lot of work to do this and remember to keep everything in the proper adjustment so that you don't key up and blow your shit up. <laughs> That's why you see people changing test equipment a lot. They blew their shit up. That's why you shouldn't be talking or anything else while you're working. That's why I don't even like to talk, and a lot of times I don't even like to do videos. All right, so here we go. Back to full power. What I used to show, always show you guys is this, so you had an idea what was going on. It's always the same, same noise floor, and. Let's go to 300. Not bad. You see 54, it's coming up. Not too bad. So now we see what a radio straight out of the box does. We've shown this before. Now, I'm probably just going to stop the video, get this one out of the way, and start another one from out of the box. Or hold on a second, we'll see. I don't like to have radios all over the place. It gets to be kind of a, a pain mixing the radios up on serial numbers. And, you know what I mean? So let me take a breath here and think about it. Did you learn anything? That thing is badass. The RF generator, the frequency counter. It's got a scope in it too, but it's only 5 megahertz. It's basically for AF or audio frequency. I use it from time to time. That's what all this is all for. Generating the tone, the voltage, and checking distortion in, in radios. Like I said, we've just barely touched the tip of the iceberg here. And we're just trying to get people caught up, you know. Alright, we don't need to do the receiver. We see what it does now out of the box. Now let's see if another one does the same thing. Now we might have to wait a while to heat one up because after I went outside, talked to a friend, came back in, air conditioner's on, blowing right on the radio. So it runs cooler, you know, it's really cool. Nothing is all inside or the heat can't be held inside. So it's the air is blowing on this. The air conditioner blows right here. It's blowing over the back of my head right on the test equipment and then being sucked down through the back of the heat out of there. So Mopo gets to feel the fan right now. He's looking at me. <laughs> Yo, Mopo, I love you, man. Say, uh oh, he, he's learned to leave me alone when I'm doing a video. All right, stop bad ones. Get one out of the, see that insulator? That's not bad. Let's take a look at it. I want to thank you guys for your patience too. All these different updates, they take time. That's a factory whack job on the regulator. It don't look all that great. But we'll take care of that. If anybody takes my stuff apart and looks at it, all you can say is, man, that looks better than new. That's right. The 955s. Some people say they don't have much grease or whatever. Oh, man, they're, they're so full of shit, it's ridiculous. Look at it all. See it? Let's take a look at the audio chip. It's got grease oozing out everywhere. Try to find it. There's the audio chip. See it? Everything's grease. Everything's always checked, but the regulator. Look at the insulator on, on that tip 36. Yeah, they didn't do too bad on the diode. We'll touch and clean that up too. 
All right, let me grab another one real quick. Sight out of camera, it's hocus, hocus guaranteed. Hocus, hocus full of shit. see just a scope is useless now 100 megahertz scope in calibration terminated correctly used correctly there are things that you can tune out it takes some time you gotta know what you're doing and I've talked to a few different people I said you know what, man should I show them how to do it you know, the majority of people, actually no one, no one has said yes. Everybody says, no, hard drive, don't. So it's like, ah, I won't. Because you got to have decent equipment anyway in the first place. If you don't, it's not going to work for you. Maybe one day, click subscribe. Hold on, i got the coffee going right here. somebody will end up with that so let's see what we got going here so I gotta go to see what I'm doing here need some more light in the camera better on the regulator but it's so pretty that looks nasty <laughs> but it'll look a lot better when we're done All right, first we'll fire it up as it sits Inch or two to get rid of the glare. All right. Yeah, the scope's pretty good. We'll put this in there just in case, because 
We don't want no metal objects getting underneath it. Turn it on. AM. Key it up. Dirty as hell. I'm just gonna zoom through this part real quick. All right, so let's get that adjusted. This one's keying a little higher. So its amplitude's a little bit lower. See all that distortion in there? You're gonna see what it looks like here shortly, even more. I think what you guys are gonna really like when you see this scope is pretty much useless to like some people. Oh, they're splattering. Well, there's way more to it than that. <laughs> way more to it. Okay, where are we at up here? So let's go to 50 kilohertz at 29.6 megahertz. 29.600 ah. Still kind of shitty So let's go to 30 megahertz And we got some weird shit in there So let's go to 5 megahertz and see what that is Right at the edge, seven, we'll try. Uh, maybe it was further out. Well, we're not gonna sit here and look for it. Back to 30 megahertz. See some spikes and some spurs. The radio hasn't been touched yet. Alright, so uh, give me a second here. Be right back. Now we see a key somewhere differently. Get up 
that frequency. Power changed a little bit. Eh, the wave looks a little bit better. Let's zoom in the camera. Still got distortion. Zero five. Right, let's take a look at that. Looks the same pretty much. Hard to see both of these. But you can see the distortion right in the wave. And that's what you're seeing right there. Now we're going to turn the power down. See how distorted looking that is? Now let's get this back where it belongs. Splattering into the adjacents, generating all kinds of extra unnecessary heat. Pretty shitty. See the wave? So when you just turn them down, you're just causing more issues than anything. So leave them where they're at. This is what you get if you buy one, okay? If you don't touch it, most of the people that are out there are much better off if you don't let anybody touch it. And as you can see, this is factory. So let's come over here to 30 kilohertz. See it splattering? Everything right there in front of you. Now we might have to wait for it to warm up to go into spazoid mode. Let's pull this off. I got two of them I got to get done quickly. Two of the two more have been promised. They're going out. Any tunes are going out. It's non stop. Let's see. Right there. Power down. 30 megahertz. There we go. Totally different signature. <laughs> okay, let's power down, I believe. We'll look at it again closer. But that's the reality of it, okay? I actually want a cigar. My vape screwed up the other day. I had to glue it back together, fix it. So I actually got some of these. Now I want one. But I'm not going to make you guys wait. I'm not going to smoke in here. So hold on a second. Yeah, this gets me going. You see that shit, okay? I mean, you see it. It's real. Give me a second. Hold on. Well, I'm not going to play any music, so I'm going to put this on Facebook also. And Facebook doesn't like music at all. Not one bit. One second. Give me a minute. We won't go like this. Just let that play for a second. That's it. Now, my other camera here, this little guy here, that one, it's got a zoom too, somewhere. Just give me a minute.
I'm going to turn the RF power, my hands right here. Let's power up, power down, power like quarter, half, and uh, I still got that hooked up. Audio is 7, 8, 9, 10, break. And that's at 30 megahertz, okay? So you guys, hold on. You get a good blast here. Let's go to 45 watts. You guys that are running the single final radios by Polar Transistor 2078, the 2166, by the way, that was always my secret weapon in the, the GTLs, whether it was a uh, Dynascan, Cobra, Uniden, the uh, Uniden 78, that's what they came back to it. But if you look up the specs, on a real Mitsubishi 2SC2166, I believe it's 13 dB gain. It's quite a bit for a transistor. And if you know what you're doing with the biasing with that, you can do a lot with a single. More power isn't always what you want. It's the gain of the transistor. This is like, well, how are you gonna get into amplifiers? I was talking to another gentleman, another CB guy, amp guy, CB guy. Yeah, we actually talked. And that's what you want to look into, man, is the gain in the stages. But you still want it linear. Make linear amplifiers. Linear. I think we talked till like 2 o'clock in the morning this time, probably. Maybe later. You know who you are? <laughs> I hope you're catching on to some of this shit here too. You were asking me about a spectrum analyzer and some other things. I mean, I've told people, like when they bought their scope, or you know, you just can't go to eBay, you can't do that shit. When you're gonna buy a scope, it's gotta be from someone that's has the ability to either ship it to them, which you don't want that, you want them on the spot, some of the manufacturers like the analog scopes, and it's bare minimum NIST traceable certification and calibration. That means it'll always fall within specs. <clears throat> minimum, they don't have to make adjustments. I covered all this stuff a long time ago. But without it, it's gonna be useless. But I remember I'm gonna to try to show what a scope does when it's out of calibration, or someone keyed something into it then sea beers and hams, that's what they do. Through my years and years and years of doing this, starting out with CIE many decades ago, the teachers were very, very, very critical. It was basically just generators, no radios, into, our, into scopes. It's like kindergarten. <laughs> Now that I think back at, back at it, compared to this real world stuff, it's like, you know, you get this guy, he could be 21, he could be 31 or 61. He's got this CDL in his hand. And he comes up to you and he tells you he's a truck driver. You know, and you've been driving 30 or 40 years, or even, 20, or even two years. <laughs> And he's telling you he's a truck driver, right? Right, 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 right. <clears throat> we'll leave that alone. He's got that cool looking belt buckle and pointed shoes though, no offense to anybody. Oh man, some people, that's what they wear. But if you gotta do that to drive a truck and the chain drive won't. <laughs> You're on the wrong channel, guys. It, <laughs> never mind. All right, so yeah, I got a couple tokes on that. Nothing else, no other stupid shit, just that. People like to make things up. 
God, do they make things up on someone that tries to show this stuff. No, I don't teach how to do it. If someone says, well, I learned it from our drive. Well, you learned how to install them maybe, but I don't teach anybody how to do anything here. There's a couple of guys I've talked to a little bit, and uh, if you're into the video this far, if you start doing it, you best be prepared. That's all I got to say. <laughs> be extremely prepared. Okay, we're at uh, 27205 on AM. Just look at the sideband once. Yeah, see all the crazy shit in there? I'm slowly modulating and unmodulating it. You can't see it. You can just see it over here, you know, but you can't really see it. If I turn the talk back on, you'll hear the difference. See all that shit? That's not good. And there's there's no just screw or AMC or ALC that you could turn. There's a lot more to this than a scope or even a dual tone. Dual tone is great for checking the linearity of stages and or amplifiers, but that's just about all it's really good for. When you're actually dealing with a radio that's got different frequency responses than others, you gotta know what tones to use. And if they ever try to show you a dual tone, make sure, and I've shown this, that they show you the exact voltage, the frequencies of both channels, the radio, and all the equipment all at once. Otherwise, kick them in the, in the face because they're lying to you. Got that part? They're really screwing with you. They don't show you everything. Okay, so let's go to uh, 110 megahertz. That'll show us a second. You can see the second. Fuck. Is that what you really want? It's not. See that? That's what it is. Mike's radio repair. You said you got a generator to do it. Now show it then. Moment of truth. You got one? Show it. New out of the box. Moment of truth is over. Okay. Let's go to 300. This is as real as it gets. Now we can sit here and sweep it. We can do a lot of other things and show you a whole bunch more, which is far more accurate than trying to do some quick sweep and or over a period of time. That over a period of time might be okay for specifications, but for the real world, this is only up, well, this is up against the load of this. But when you put things up against an antenna, that's the key right there. It's an entirely different world. You see, oh, I got a 50 ohm load. Well, it's a lot more complicated than that, guys and girls. The real world is a lot more complicated. Make sure they can show you how it performs on an antenna. Uh, always, I know none of us want to do that and make it known and shown. Might be more than a couple of watts. <laughs> but uh, they can't show you on the antenna. That's another big no-no. All right, so we showed that. So let me get this one out of here now. That's, that's enough to show for that. I mean, over and over, the same shit. I'm not always gonna keep showing connected. Okay, when I sit here and work, I have a cycle that I go through. I can't make mistakes. It's very bad. It's like you'll see someone keying into their RF generator, you know. <laughs> and they got to show you weird shit, you know, because their stuff's not calibrated. Certain features and or steps, the steps won't work right. They won't be correct. 
they won't fall within the tolerances and then you gotta show more, they gotta show less. What a nightmare that would be. See that? Point zero, 50 kilohertz, modulated. One megahertz. Modulated. See that? See how wide that is? That's one megahertz. Alright, one megahertz. With three kilohertz bandwidth. Good luck. Good close look. Now, when you see those big old giant mountains <laughs> on these uh, software-defined radios, etc., and you wonder what they are, that's a one megahertz, man. Let's go to two. That's a 30 kilohertz bandwidth, though, okay? But one megahertz. Three kilohertz bandwidth. I mean, that's bad. Well, let me get this one out of the way. I showed it on the scope through the bench. Catching on on the arithmetic mean. That's the sound and the performance. That's the slicing and dicing. This helps a lot to make them clean. Yes. Oh yes. I've covered the arithmetic mean in the past. All right. My little mud duck. Connected. Remember the scratches on the tape right there? Right, let's go direct. This is basically what they're all going to do. If you got one of mine, since the Palomar's Maxmon. Now the low power on this is going to be set a little bit different. Yeah, sometimes it there's a little bit of something something. It's cold. That sideband. Okay, and sideband's gonna be really low on power, especially for that reason. Some people are used to looking at that. But this is what I like to see. Double scale, 100 megahertz scope minimum. Yeah, it's gonna go off the scale a little bit because it's got a little bit more. So we're gonna turn the volts per division down just a little tiny bit. Yes, this is how they all go out. I don't do anything different than what I preach. I practice what I preach. This is something that you should uh, make sure the technician that you deal with does himself. If they're using an IC7300 or they're using something else, well, I don't like them radios, I like this. Pat them on the shoulder, walk away. Say, I'm glad you have a nice radio. But if they're not using what they promote, 
you know, and said, what's up with that? You know, they work at a Chevy dealer and drive a, a Ford. <laughs> there might be a reason for that, but I'm not saying Ford or Chevy, but you know what I'm talking about. It's a rule of thumb. It's like the two simplest things. I could walk into a shop or even look through the window. I could tell you exactly what they do, how they make their living, what their abilities are at that time with that bench. They might have more or less abilities, but you can spot it a mile away. Like the scope over here, over there on a top shelf, make a squiggly line so I could tell you some stories. Oh my God. So, we're just gonna look at AM. We've already done all the dual tone, we've done everything. Kind of cool, huh? I know, you wanna see it straight in. I'm gonna show you, don't worry. See that? From the spectrum analyzer? Go back and look at the other one. You know, you kind of look at it like you got so much pressure at one end of a pipe or a hose, it's got to shoot so far, or you can look at it like a gun and rifling and grain. But if you open up that diameter or spread it out, okay, you're not going to have that pressure at the other end. It's not going to be there. You got volume just flowing all over the place, nice and wide, but that's not getting you out. I mean, you might talk in DX land, so people are going to tell you, you sound great. Oh, yeah, because you got a gazillion watts, maybe a giant antenna. You're going to get out, you know, conditions, all kinds of power. But the dude that's doing it barefoot, they get more of my respect. Hold on. Now, what do you consider barefoot? Uh, that's that's a tricky one there. Barefoot, you know, eons ago for CB was a cranked up Cobra 29 or a box stock is how you'd say that it was out of the box. Let's just say. 20 continuous AM and 100 watts sideband. That's what a lot of the ham radios are, if they can even do that. This right here will beat the living you know what out of my IC7000 coming and going. It doesn't have the same frequency bandwidth, no. It doesn't have that as in channels. But for AM and sideband, receive and transmit, yeah, this kicks the shit out of a 7300. No, excuse me, I didn't say that. I don't have a 7300. I might want to try one. The IC7000. I, I kind of like my 7000. This is so much cleaner, it's ridiculous. Alright. So the high low power. All the way down. Flickering a little bit. Back to wide open power. And this will sit here and run and run and run and run. Timeout timer to timeout timer will run and run and run and run and run and run. Maxima, Palomars, and a specific tune. Uh, Arp Limit was saying, yeah, but they just can't drop them in and they work right. Well, that's true. And I told them, I said, I can't give you the entire formula. I gotta stay in business, make it a little bit interesting for people. Works fantastic. All right, so let's go direct. can see all coax. Connect this little cable again. 
You might have to make different adjustments on the service motor because this does put out more power. so low and keep it exactly the same. All right. Notice how it's not spurting out. Actually, to be fair, it needs to be turned down a little bit. And modulate it. Let's go. That was 30 kilohertz, 30 megahertz. Nice. Not bad, huh? Back to 30. Notice how everything is where, where it needs to be. Okay, let's go to 60. See how it's right at the edges? Right at the edges. Now it's gonna sprawl out. See that attenuation right there? Now that <laughs> is the key to everything. The sound, the performance. We're gonna put it on the scope now. Go get a cup of coffee, get a cigarette, or put your thinking cap on. get some more vape in this thing. Yeah, if you didn't want to watch the video this damn long, you wouldn't have watched it. I may have taken my vape home with me. So I'll be right back, okay? Yeah, I did. Like an idiot, I took my vape home. I'll be right back.
Well, hello, my folks. Hey, man. How you doing? I didn't go nowhere. I'm, I came right back. Can you go back under? Okay. Hello. Excuse me. I got a, a nose right here. And some ears. Hello, man, man. I had to do a 10 100 too, so anyways. Hello, my best boy in the whole world. Yeah, it's you. Can I hold your cheeks? I love you. I, I do, man, more than anything. Yes, I do. I put you on the bench, but we're doing some stuff. And some people bitch about your hair. Oh, I love you. Yes, I do. Oh, yes. Of course, see, peace job come with me. It's my good boy. I love you, man, man. Sorry, guys. This is part of the deal here. I love you, man. <laughs> I need a picture of that. Yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful. It's a beautiful a dirty floor. Oh, they got you in there now. All right, go lay down, okay? In your bed. No, I, I know. Uh, more scratch. Okay. Oh, yeah. I love them. All right, in your spot. Good boy. Vape, sorry for hanging in there, but I didn't want to stop the camera. I noticed my view length is really getting longer, which is good, certain videos. See that? Notice how it's not some giant hump. And I showed you that. If you got the right equipment, you can figure out the tones and figure out why I use the type of equipment that I use and why it's necessary. Some cheap generator. This has a generator too but that's what all these functions are. Dual tones, you name it. But it's much harder to do what I do the more time, actually I can't really do on AM what I could do with this other generator. And still have access to other features on my service monitor, which is very unique. All right, so we've seen that. That's mine, so I'm gonna talk. There's video gates in this radio. I'd say the last one I think it was. Well, John's got one where I had the echo on. He hasn't put it up yet. There's another one with the echo off. I mean, there's God only knows how many gates. This radio, all the radios, and the customers out there. Let's connect. Pull X again. Now you're gonna see something that I'm gonna do with an adjustment. Well, a lot of guys already know there's an adjustment. Take my word for it. Don't try this. Your radios perform nothing like mine at all. There's a lot of alterations just for this. So when you see me turning something, which isn't the AMC, or you have one of my radios, do not turn it. You will not be able to get back to the same place. Like, without this equipment, you can't do it. Okay? Now do you see what the attenuator does? You'll see that in a lot of different benches. So let's get it back up here. But it still works for certain things. It works great, actually. But IMD, harmonics, not harmonics. Yeah, harmonics, it's gonna attenuate it. And anything like over 60, drastically, okay? 
the meter itself, the feed line or through line, it's capable. All my connectors, these are basically like 30 megahertz, that's 30 megahertz. Bird sampler. And if they tell you they have one, if they don't show you, <laughs> guaranteed they're lying to you. If they don't show you, if they say it, don't have a video, they're full of shit on these forums, pages. If they don't show you, I know they're clicking dislike, 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 oh shit, hard drives giving us up. If they're a cartoon character on some web page and types in a whole bunch of shit that they just copy and pasted, they're nothing but a cartoon character. Full of hate, discontent, just hate. There's so much hate out there. It's unbelievable. Show the certificates, show the bench, start doing some work. Let's see it, but don't be charging people while you're experimenting on the radios. Okay, we'll try to get all this in here. You'd be surprised that you could find just by a couple different hertz or the tone, just a little bit of what can be generated. People, I mean, a lot of people have been wanting to send me their radios. I don't have that kind of time anymore. I just don't do it. Buy new. Just buy new. If you love the old stuff, then I'm glad you love it. I'm not interested. <laughs> just not interested. It's never going to be time again for me. Still, like, a year in advance. All the way through next year. New radio sales only. I have to take care of my customers, proven customers. I see some glare in there though, that sucks. Yeah, it kind of works. See that drop? People say, man, it just kicks ass so bad, so good. Yeah, it does. You only need to see half of it. It's, a, it's the same, it's a mirror image. But you see it attenuating a specific way. They're cool, huh? But watch the spectrum analyzer. That's the important part. Go to six. All the way down, it'll be crystal clear. So people wonder why do I show that? It's because all the way on the top in the higher frequencies, I can go much higher, much higher. But like I've been showing and stating, people watch my videos and then they try to repeat everything that I say. The type of thing, if you noticed, is worthless. The most important key to this is the typical average receiver. Now, my radios will hear clear because of the tune, the updates, my speaker, even a very broad band of radio. If it's clean and clear, my radios hear it perfect. Perfect. It just won't have that lower frequency sound. But if it's clean, clear, there's 85. It has to be attenuated though. Hear that? Now watch watch when I turn the talk back up. You see my finger is talk back. Keep 
the talk back low. Notice how it's not spreading out? Not a giant bump? Nope. Okay. You're not going to really see anything. You're going to all attenuate it. You see me attenuating? Now I just gave it a whole bunch, okay? Like almost everybody does, they crank this open. Now watch. Well, I gotta change. We're gonna drop down like this and work our way back up. Watch the spectrum analyzer. Now imagine if we were direct. The spectrum analyzer. See how bad you'd be into the adjacent channels? There's nothing wrong here. Now imagine if I opened up the AMC, you notice nothing's changed in peak ratio wise. Look, see them on either edge? Just completely wasted, worthless energy. See that? Go to 700. Try to look in the camera too. When we change our bandwidth at that time, go to one megahertz. Hold that in here. 0 0.03 and 30 kilohertz. <laughs> <laughs> See how the different frequencies? Now you start combining those frequencies with like the human voice. Like with a power mic. Here, watch. We'll just use this. Audio 78910. Audio 7, I wish this was faster to get it all at the same time. This might help some people to realize also with like the flex radio, etc. If it's not fast enough, you're only seeing a small portion of reality. See, this can do the single tone pretty easy. It can keep up with that one tone. But you'll see this in some of the SDR radios when they're recording. If they go past, like, you know, some of the guys are doing that wide band. That's cool if it cuts off. But a direct cutoff has a weird sound to it also. You want to have the right roll-offs and the right amplitude of the natural voice. Like, I, God only knows how many times I've said it. And you'll remember it. High fidelity is the exact reproduction or faithfully reproduced of the original sound. And in communication for a radio, as in a CV or 10 meter, 11 meter AM and sideband, the most advantageous is to what slices and dices through the noise, the typical noise that's out there in the atmosphere, and to be able to talk furthest, like a razor the furthest, bar none, 
Talkburn. Now, the antennas changed everything, but Talkburn this and be crystal clear up close. For an example, I just thought of this. For one of these radios in a truck, check out the 74 mile uh, radio. That's with Scott Johnson and Tom. It's 101 and uh, Rabbi Porkchop. So people like to pick on this, you guys. If they're only doing their normal thing, they have two fine-tuned radios. They follow directions exceptionally well. Both already have a lot of experience in operating radios, installing antennas, etc. But I mean, this that covers it both AM and sideband. I talked to Tom on a regular basis. I talked to quite a few others, but Tom is the one I get in the video gates. And he's using one of these. Well, I take that back. 101 in that diesel mobile. He's got a chromium one. <laughs> yeah, he's got a chrome one. That must make him get out better, right? So now I gotta make adjustments to this radio again to get it back to where it needs to be. And I probably won't do that on camera. That's a waste, okay? The higher energy, the higher frequency, it draw, it takes more power. It's like burning at high RPM. Over your torque curve, over your horsepower, it starts to drop, okay? It just drops. But you're burning fuel, you're stretching rods, man. You know, it's worthless. Completely entire, you know, the meter's gonna go woo woo woo. But it's worthless, guys. Now, if you guys are the scope, do you see what I'm talking about? Look. How are you gonna tell that? You tell me. You got magical powers? Sit back, smoke a cigarette, do whatever, bite your tongue, look in the mirror and say, I'm so stupid, I don't care what you do. Are you with me? You need more than a dollar store scope. Let's get into the calibration part now. Well, I'll do this. If you have enough stuff to figure some stuff out, By the way, I'm just so ever so slightly turning this, okay? I'm gonna kill that talk back, that will affect it. drop-offs and we'll go back to 0 0.05 0 0.05 you can't do this without the test equipment you don't have magical powers accept it you do not, okay? Yes, this radio has been keyed on video, no antenna. It's done so much poor shit. <laughs> A lot.
Now let's see. Now if I was jacking with the AMC, you know there's really no way I could have done that, right? Give us some power here. Well, we got it pretty high is what we got. Even this one's dropped a little bit of juice. As you can see, hot, hot, hot. Okay, let's give it some light. I gotta be able to see what I'm doing here. Oh, okay. This is the perfect time for this. I don't think I've ever got that. Yeah, I got it hot, okay? <laughs> it's hot. If I could touch it, it's, it's pretty warm. I've been just beating the you-know-what out of it. Hold on a second. For how long now? Dials are kicking in, starting to work. That's what they normally look like when they're done. A lot better than brand new, don't they? Yeah, this, I might have to wait a minute or two to let it cool. It's very, it's hot. Might have to go back in the video to see how long we've been jacking with it. Comax all kinked up here. Plus it's laying down, doing what I tell you guys not to do. Because the heat sink can't get air. Okay, it's laying down, can't circulate. Just give it a minute. That's another topic. Just give it a few seconds. Let me uh This is plastic, so let me get that underneath it. See again, I just got mine hot. It's got a little had a little bit of power fade. Why? Because it's sitting down on something. Where not even its own air, its own its own heat sink. I can feel the heat coming up now. I feel the heat, literally. If I had something to point at it that would show it, I would. But now I feel the heat. <laughs> Will it blow up? No, it's not going to blow up. What else can we talk about for a minute or so? One second. That scope. That one. Shit. We don't need to do that. The uh, linear knob on this is nothing like the one on this. This one is adjustable, and you can see it by the cycles, and the actual voltage. Let's take all my other ones. This one shows it right there on the screen. You change it easily instead of 100 all the time. It's it's just too much. 
and you gotta sit there and spin the dial and spin the dial and spin the, it's too time consuming. I called the manufacturer of the order. We had a three-way conversation with the uh, manufacturer. And I discussed to them what, what what the scoop was, and they said, "No, there's nothing that they can do. It's, you can't change anything in the firmware. Maybe in the future they'll be able to. They might start using it more. Right now, I just use it. A couple of digital things. They're not digital, but so, uh, PLL, etc." On, on different boards. I have another set of probes plug into it, but all I use it for is monitoring the radio. Alright, so see these you can adjust the way you want them and it's quick. tone difference echo on echo off echo off echo on so let's just use it like this for instance if your scope was out of calibration we should wait till this thing cools off it's going to cool off in the meantime And again, if you put one in a cubby hole, you lay it down, okay, on those spins. There's no air underneath it, no circulation. Don't expect this to do anything at all besides hold heat, because that's all it's going to do. It's not going to do any more. Once it gets warm and absorbs the heat, you know, all the heat from the regulator, the audio chip, this other regulator, the finals, the driver, it's just going to get hot and hold heat. It can't go anywhere. So, we'll just talk a little bit more. It's, it's cooling up quick, so don't do that. I'm glad we're doing this in this video. You're just going to get it hot. Then when you got the lids on it, the heat builds up inside. It'll drift even more on frequency. Usually, whenever you can, you know, depending if you have the radio mounted somewhere, you know, you can change the way the heat blows up the heat sink by tilting the radio depending on your environment. In a truck, I always kept them up overhead and I kept my visors down, but in such a fashion that it directed heat, not heat, but air, not literally blowing on my radio but just circulating around it because you don't always have that ability to put you know, your, excuse me, defrosters on your radio. My vehicle, etc. I still like to use my defrosters, keep the air moving, keeps the, the air conditioner working also. You know, when it's even winter time, it keeps the compressor and all the seals lubricated. That's all a different subject. See how we're coming back. The receive on this is phenomenal. I love the receive. You know, there's more done than just. See, a lot of people think you just pop this lid, connect a cable, and jack a signal into it. That might be kind of half-assed okay if someone's jacked with it before for a regular, typical screwdriver service manual tune. But there's much more to the sensitivity and aligning each individual coil independently by itself. And the AGC, the attack time, there's more to this. More to it than I just even explained. Where if you notice, you already own mine. If you already own them, you've had them for a year or so, or five years, you probably don't really notice that much of a difference just besides the fact that you hear what others can't hear, providing you don't get all the noise out of the vehicle, etc. But you become accustomed to it. When you first get them and start using them, you'll be thinking, holy shit, look at that. And even though the S9 is set correctly, 
you'll be able to hear with your ears through the speaker, providing this, you have the right speaker, not just some speaker, you know, some six by nine or something, with the wrong impedance and frequency response. You'll be able to hear these signals just jump right on out. I get comments like that on my Facebook page a lot. Once it gets back to its normal temperature, it'll stay there. I, I should have, I should have done that. But it's on video, you'll see it. If I do this, I can sit here and run it, run it, run it, run it, run it, run it, run it. It's, it's pretty cool already. Well, it's still warm, but all right. Now, we're gonna have to do this in reversal. Let's say the scope isn't calibrated. I have to use the double scale, two bars up, two bars down on this scope. And this scope is very capable of that, even in much higher frequencies than just 27 megahertz, one second. So what I have to do is something like in reversal. You just get to follow along with me, okay? I'm not even sure I can explain it in words very well. I can show you and I know what I'm doing. But it's not going to... Explaining it might be kind of strange. This scope is capable of like running like a 20 megahertz scope. A very, very, very high end 20 megahertz analog scope but it's going to show distortion at the outer limits when I double scale it. So let's just consider double scaling normal, like one bar up, one down, one bar down. Remember, we're going to be comparing two bars up, two bars down as one. That will be equal. Then we're going to go back to the regular, you know, 400 megahertz, and I'm going to show you the difference. This has to do with the vertical amplifiers. In this one, it's just clipping off, not clipping, but attenuating everything over 30 or 20 megahertz. So you're gonna see it. I still want this to cool down even more. It's getting there, as you can see. Mine, after I've been talking on it all day, it's like about 78 PEP watts. It'll show more if I put voice into it, but. We don't care about that. We care about the pure sine wave. As you can see when I went where the scope go. There we go. Can't see the camera, remember? So um, when we sweep it and look at the waveform and view it on the spectrum analyzer, how clean everything is, let's get the glare out of there. We know that everything's on the money. We've already shown that. We just beat the hell out of it again. For all that time, you can't talk that much in a day for as much as I just beat on this. Plus my own stupidity of letting it sit down where I can't get air. Almost. Almost there. Alright, so we'll just use it. Well, I'm going to wait a little bit longer. So what we're going to do is use this as a 20. Double scaled but the double scale, consider it to be one bar up, one bar down. Yes, I'm repeating myself. I'm getting tired, I'm getting hungry. Yeah, my Saturday night, I need to be getting these radios done and shipped. This will also have to do if your scope is not in calibration. If you don't have a calibrated scope, you don't have anything. I can't recall ever seeing a scope out of calibration where the negative peaks are screwed up unless the scope has some serious other issues like someone blasted too much power into it or the frequency that the scope isn't capable of and that can be harmonics like a linear amplifier will do it yes it will a class C an AB in self oscillation if they start producing frequencies like 300 megahertz and above, or even 100 or 54, the scope's not capable of that. You start ramming it in, you're gonna cause some issues. Sometimes it's just a resistor. 
Now I've, used, I've done math in the past with some other scopes. I was working on a lot of other bigger radios, large amplifiers, and some of my scopes I'd had, you can call it an attenuator, and I did the math to figure out what resistance and what to use for my volts per division. Is that accurate? No. It's not accurate for measuring volts per division. It's accurate enough for measuring the positive negative peak ratio. That's the key of the scope, is the ability to measure the positive negative peak ratio. If you can't do that, you're going to be splattering to adjacent channels. You're going to be detuning or misaligning the radio. It's inevitable. It's a fact. There's no way around it. If you made it this far, I'm glad. If you don't have a calibrated scope, you cannot tune AM. Forget it. You're going to get it close, but you're not going to get it. You can be undermodulated, overmodulated, or not even not even the modulation, what you're going to get is the power ratio is incorrect. You're going to see that in a minute. You drink your coffee, you're waiting, you're ready. Yeah, it's almost back to the normal operating temperature. See, we're almost there. You can see the diodes, how they're working. They turn the power down. Or just doing what they're supposed to do. Are you with me on that? Back it up. Not only does it alter the peak, the, what the wave looks like, you will completely screw up what you think that you're doing. You're thinking that you're doing a good job. Some of you guys, you're probably scratching your head saying, damn it, hard drive. Some are saying, F you, hard drive. God only knows, but just kick back and watch. It's 100% it's the truth. So many people, when they get a scope, and I've been telling people this for a long time, you don't want one if you don't know how to use it. And if you're going to get one, it's got to be calibrated or you need to know how to reference it. If you need to know how to reference it, then I suggest you do not take people's money. Just do play with your own work. Don't take people's money. You need a calibrated scope. There was a couple people on some forums, and I'm not going to get into no names right now. He was trying to tell Snake that you don't need a scope and calibration is not necessary. No one has a calibrated scope. Well, you obviously don't work on radio equipment. You might be checking components for voltage, but that's all you're doing. You're not really that familiar. You're not familiar with AM. You might be learning it, trying to act like you know something, but you don't know shit. Okay, close enough. Nah, we'll wait a little bit more. I try to tell people the wrong shit, man. That's that's uncool. You have a vendetta. Yeah, I understand why. You need to grow up, little boy. Keyboard warrior thing's not gonna work anymore for you. As you noticed. Good enough, just like I've been beating the hell out of it all day long. There we go. So let's count the graticule and look at it in the camera. Let's get it in there. Make sure it's right. Yeah, it looks pretty right to me. Always make sure that everything is zeroed out. That's why this meter that one okay not the digital version of this one that one is cool a lot of information on this meter and right, so we're almost there I mean almost we're a couple watts down we'll take a look at it one bar up and one bar down now what you're about to see, I don't want you to think that you can use a 20 megahertz scope. You can use a 30 for this, but it's about all you're going to use it for. And I would never even think about using a 30 megahertz scope to do AM. There's 
way more to it. Once you go past its specs, then and you will real easy. Anything 1% over 100% modulation is beyond its specifications. That's going to depend on the manufacturer and a few other variables. But here we go. Can I see it? It's not flat topping, that's just the lines there. See the bottom? flat top going on. And it's still a little warm. Then it's centered. Kind of like crosshairs, ain't it? Yeah, it's still a little warm. But that's okay. And just a couple of percent low on the positive peaks, if that. So now, I gotta give it some white so I can see what's going on here. We're gonna turn this into a 20 megahertz scope. Okay, and we gotta readjust this is going to look hunky-dory. Right on the money. Now watch this. This would be the same as doing one bar up, one bar down. This is the point I want to make. Now I want you to watch what it looks like. Notice how it looks like it's flat topping. Notice the percentage of modulation is less. So now if you were in the radio attempting, trying to get it cooler, to adjust that waveform to what you think is correct, depending on the type of distortion or how it's out of calibration, you're way over 100% modulation or under. See it? It almost looks like it's flat topping. Look how much less percent of modulation. That's dropped down to like 75. Almost right at 100 on the negative, but not 75, 95. Yeah. Does that matter? Yeah, it does. As if I showed you on the spectrum analyzer. The slightest amount will put you dab smack right into the adjacent channels tearing them up that little tiny bit see it see what it looks like well you would turn the power down Well, this is going to go off the scale now, this radio. That's not going to work, actually, if I do that. Just use, use your imagination that that's one bar up and one bar down. That's what you got. Now stop and think. What you'd be doing is turning the power down, adjusting the bias, attempting to get that to do 100% modulation with the proper ratio of positive and negative peaks. But what you'd be doing is splattering like hell into the adjacent channels. I have never seen a scope <clears throat> go the opposite way. Never. Not yet. They're always less. So consider like this being a 20 right there that your scope was, wasn't was calibrated. That little bit is all the difference in the world in how you splatter into your adjacent channels, the tune, the frequency response. 
Make sure I can see the camera. See now, if you would look at that, okay. On a spectrum analyzer, anyone that knows anything knows that that laptop I'm looking shit will be splattering like hell. 0 0.05. I look at videos, people say there's no way you could tell hard drive. Yes, I can. I can look at the shit. Anyone that does this in their sleep can do the same thing. You see, we're also seeing a different peak ratio on the negatives. So let's come over here. See how that does not correlate to that? It does not match. That's like a, a triangle going into a round peg hole. It doesn't match. Does it? See? So now let's go back to the regular scope. We'll look at it here. Looks nice. You gotta bear with me, I can't really see this. I know it's really wildly bright in the camera, but it's not here. Let's see how that looks. It's totally different. Completely and totally different. It's one of the reasons I love a higher, much higher frequency scope. They can handle a lot more in a lot of different ways. I need to be able to see what I'm doing here. You know, I don't know if I bumped. I could have. Let's get it back to 1K. All screwing around. Uh, what it is, is this needs to be up a little bit higher. And that's going to go back down just a little bit. And that that should be that should work. We'll do that again, okay? Nice and hot. Yeah. So you with me on this so far? How a person could tell? It's like, hello, buddy. You know, an oblong fitting in a circle. It don't work. You get spotted a mile away. But, bud, not now. I love you. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I love you. Oh, what? 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 No. Oh, really? I love you. Not yet. Hold that thought, he wants to go home. I'm not gonna stop the camera, no, let it roll. <laughs> Little oasis here. Right, one more second. Is this any of this settling in yet? Let's do it again. You guys, yeah, we're cooling down a little bit. Just give it another minute. I you know there's a lot of crazy things people try to say about me. Well, I don't really see anyone else. Well, there, there are. Alan's awesome at this. I love the way Alan does his videos. 
But it seems like anytime you show anything of value that others aren't doing or they don't have the equipment, they all want to bash on hard drive. Where people are trying to claim hard drive bashes on others, no. Hard drive just bites back. So all you newbies, pay attention. There we go. After beating the living hell out of my radio. <laughs> this radio has been through a lot. Okay, a lot. Am I going to show the gate voltages and anything else? If you can really look close and see what components are all for change. Yeah, good for you. Good for you. Good for you. I'm not sharing nothing. All I get's a hard time. That's all I get. Nothing but a hard time. So why? Even RF Limited knows they, they make the Palomar transistors, Max Mod, God. People just want to bash on them so bad it's ridiculous. Okay, we're back to normal. We only need a few minutes. Make sure your radio gets air. I'm not going to pull out my... I was going to pull out my little thermostat for my flute, but I'm not going to do that. Now that it's got air, it's blowing. I can still feel the heat coming up. I shouldn't have done that, but that's good. It was good for part of the video. And we can see everything going on. Okay, that's as a normal scope or 400. Actually, they rate these up to 500, but then you have to know how to compensate for the uh, lack of the rise time of the vertical amplifier. All right, there's my radio. So, let's consider this one bar up, one bar down. That's what it looks like. That's what the scope can do. Because it's such a high, much higher frequency, more than three times the fundamental frequency, it has no issues doing this. Matter of fact, you want to see other IMD and other things, you can do that with these. I'm not explaining how. Get one, get a certification and calibration, not just some sticker person. You gotta know where it's coming from. Can you get better? You can, but for what we're doing, as far as I know, this is the bench, as far as you're gonna go. New stuff, uh, I don't want it. The only thing I would be interested in is another spectrum analyzer to do what I want it to do. I want it to do a lot more. I, I was just talking to somebody about this and uh, they mentioned the same thing. SDR is not really going to cut it like real test equipment. So, see all that? Now let's go to 20. We just turned this into a 20 megahertz scope, but a very, very high end scope. It's all there. Okay. It's reading less. but minuscule, as you can see. See the difference? And each one of those ticks of reticules are relevant to the percent of modulation in the power of the two sidebands, okay? You've seen that, you've seen that little bit, oh, that doesn't matter, it does. Now let's go like this and say that we are only one bar, I know I'm repeating myself, we are only one bar, one bar up and down. But this would be simulating a scope that's out of calibration. See the difference? The wave looks overdriven, and it's right at its edge, and it's not reaching the same positive peaks. 
Let's go back. See the difference? Okay. Does a calibrated scope matter? Yes. Let's go back here again. And remember, this would be like one bar up and one bar down. The top and the bottom of the positive and negative peaks do not are not in relation to what you see on the spectrum analyzer. It would be wider and be spreading out. The amplitude is not the same. Amplitude is most critical when it comes to amplitude modulation. You'd be wondering, you know, okay, if, if a guy put this on his bench, he'd be turning the power down, he'd be readjusting the bias, maybe changing some other components, attempting to get that to look like a, a pure clean wave, not overdriven. That's taking it to its extreme. Let me show you what I mean. I'll do it with my own read. I could put this back real easy. So now let's take this to. So you can see what I'm doing. Well, I gotta turn it down so you can see everything. Zoom out. That's the RF power popping in then. You'll see everything change here. I'm gonna turn it up to like, I don't know, 25. Now we're going to turn this down. Now see how it emulates or looks like what I just showed you? Because it's cranked up too far. Let's take it to 30. It'll take it. See it? That's not on the 20 megahertz, that's on the 400 megahertz, it's extremely accurate. Now let's take it here, one bar up, one bar down. See how it appears to be flat topping? Let's turn it back down. Where it needs to be. Which I should have something under it. Now we're back to normal again. Yep. And everything in relation to we see on the spectrum analyzer. Well, this is a long and boring video. I tried to cover as much as possible. A scope is extremely critical. It's like a ruler. You know, if your ruler is off, your tape measure, it's off, say, a sixteenth every inch. By the time you get to a foot, you know, a yard, a hundred foot, it makes a big difference. Does a little bit matter? It does. You start putting this into amplifiers, you have your impedance or your your antenna is mismatched, you're gonna have issues. That's why it's extremely critical to have a tuned circuit, every single part from start to finish. Didn't mean to bore you, piss anybody off. I hope you learned something from this. I'm sharing my bench with you. It's, it's a really nice bench. You hear the radios, it's undeniable. You don't need, well, I won't get into other types of modulation. <clears throat> I'm gonna say good night. Take care. 163 Mud Duck Radio in the Desert. We're clear and gone. All right. You make them ring, and I'll make them sing. Stay tuned in. You know who it is. Click. Click. <laughs>